Hey guys, welcome. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and today we are in the OC show. That's your daily, not daily, weekly uh, news and hardware fix that we want to have. Uh, that's all usually at the end of the week. Uh, today is Friday and I'm being joined with two of our longtime guests. Uh, we have uh, Tullius and Bilzoid. What's up guys? Hey guys. It's going <laughs> hey. good. Hey. So Friday evening, we are 30 minutes up front on our regular time for the next two or three weeks. We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna change some of the times. We're gonna, we will uh, let you know exactly how that turn around. Uh, this is because we had the you no know, daylight time change, and now we have even more distance in between us in terms of uh, of time, especially with uh, <laughs> to use. Uh, and uh, and, and builds with uh, that's that's uh, I mean I I'm in Montreal yeah, builds with you're in UK and Tulius you're in India so that's pretty difficult to uh, keep track of all the time. Just somebody from Indonesia now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know I tried to get Alva uh, Lucky Noob in uh, in some of yeah. the show but he's so busy he's doing so many things at the same time that it's a yeah, little no, bit no, difficult for right. him to always be on the show. So yeah, but uh, well welcome. So season four. Episode uh, 15, 18? eighteen. Yeah, eighteen. 18. So that's uh, that's quite something. Um, let's uh, let's dive right into it. The first things we always do is competition updates. So quickly, Tullius uh, Country Cup. What do we have, so, and, that, that, and how many countries are participating now? So right now we've got um, thirty-three countries, and um, we still have another thirty days to go. So fair amount of time yet, but. Uh, the countries that are in the lead right now, as it stands, is United States of America, Ukraine, and the Czech Republic. Australia and Germany being in fourth and fifth. So that's how it stands right now. France is in sixth, and United Kingdom in seventh. So I, I, I do, be, I do hope France will uh, will come back at some point. I'm, yeah. I'm, I know I'm part of the uh, FFOC, so the French Federation of uh, Overclocking. I know they have some stuff. They're working on some stuff, but I don't, I don't know if they will be able to. Uh, to pull out some very big scores, especially that there's a lot of uh, rookies and, uh, and novices in that, uh, in, in France in the past, uh, active in the past few months. Bill Zoe, the Czech Republic, so are you proud? Finally, it's actually uh, uh, not that uh, useless to bench for your own country. Yeah, I'm surprised with the turnout. Like, I'm <laughs> really surprised with the turnout. Uh, That's I mean, not gonna still... last, you know that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I I know. Well, we're 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 working on it. <laughs> Everyone um, sandbagging, guys. Everyone is sandbagging. Yeah, I know everybody's sandbagging, but how do you know we're not sandbagging? <laughs> so that's what I mean. Everyone's sandbagging, including you. So, yeah, no. Um, the the like, it, we're doing so far. We're doing pretty good. I don't think we'll actually hold third all the way to the end, but. Um, yeah, I do plan to like. I do plan to put in some pretty good scores. Um, I know Elkim is probably like I've kind of managed to convince him to bench as well. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's not just me. It's like I think everybody in the Czech Republic doesn't want to bench for the Czech Republic. So, <laughs> <laughs> like all the serious guys are just like, nah, my country sucks too much. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Yusin's very European, by the way. <laughs> but, like that, that's I, I would have I would have expected that kind of uh, of behavior from like Poland or it's like oh no my I, country I think sucks. all of Eastern Europe it. is just like my country sucks too much I'm not gonna bother <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's not that bad but, so we have uh, 33 country and, 33 countries yeah and yep so. Still, I mean, there's, there's, I, I bet there's, there's a whole bunch of action, action still, still to come. But yeah, yeah no, looking no, good already. No wonder Antarctica is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for you guys, if you haven't Antarctica, watched, if you don't know why there is Antarctica, Antarctica on the, just, yeah, if you don't know why there is sorry. Antarctica in the country cup, that's very easy. Uh, not last week, but two weeks ago in the OC show, um, I made a stupid pool on should I bench for France, Canada, and I had like, of course, you always have like the. Uh, the other choice, and I put Antarctica, and everyone voted for Antarctica. So I have to bench for Antarctica. I have one score there, and it's made on my laptop. That's you. that's almost awful to uh, to admit, but yeah, that's. How I'll I join do. you. I'll join you benching for Antarctica. Let's make Antarctica. <laughs> I have a I have I'll a wallpaper and everything if you need. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, uh, USA is in the is in the lead. Uh, Bill, sorry, there's some uh, new country cup coming. Hmm? Tomorrow. <clears throat> Oh, uh, <clears throat> not Country Cup, uh, Rookie Rumble. Yeah, so so the new the new Rookie Rumble 50, uh, number 50, starts tomorrow in 20, 
yeah, in well, in just about two hours, a good twenty hours, yeah, yeah. Uh, stage um, are so usually uh, XTU, SuperPi 1M, and GPU Pi for CPU 1B. GPU Pi. Yeah. yeah. And it's all on Intel uh, Intel CPUs. So if you guys have Intel CPUs that and you're just tuning in, never did anything on HWBot, that's the time to uh, to get rolling. And, and uh, we might come to that after because there was some uh, content from Wizardy in France on Tom's Hardware France. He was uh, interviewing some of the rookie uh, guys, the... That actually kicked out some very nice scores in the in the past few uh, past few months. Uh, Rookie Rumble AMD, same thing in twenty in twenty hours. Uh, that's gonna last for a good three weeks, and uh, three weeks. yeah, and that should be a that yeah. should be a going on. So that's uh, that's cool. cool, cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, just a word about the official world overclocking ranking for the season twenty seventeen. That's something we uh, I always want. I keep an eyes on it. Uh, Ersanino is currently in the lead for the overall overclocking ranking so that takes um, in mind all the scores on the HWBot, but, but the competition scores and participation as well so Ursanino um, uh, is on the top with 756 points then we have Jixman 19, 1965 with 593 points and then Max Beach 98 from uh, New Zealand or yeah is that New Zealand yeah, I guess that's New Zealand. Yeah. And with 534 points. So we can see that Arsenino is like way ahead of everyone uh, of the second and third spot. But uh, nothing can, uh, no, nothing is impossible. Uh, there is close to a thousand people participating in this uh, overclocking world uh, ranking for the season 2017. You can participate in that one as well. Just have to participate in some of the uh, competition and uh, that, that will be it. So not bad, yeah. not bad. Uh, score of the week. Yeah. We want to we want to do it. To use build it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Right, yeah, but... <laughs> so so what score of the week is actually five five brilliant runs from uh, from uh, like you were saying, just just saying right now. I mean he's just completely killed Arsenio. So he's got he's got some amazing amazing runs as well. Uh, like uh, he's he, he's he's just creamed the eighty seven hundred k totally. He's got the fastest ever run in W prime thirty two m. He's got the, the fastest run in W prime one zero two four as well. He's taken the uh, global first place for Cinebench R eleven point five as well and um, GPU five if I'm not mistaken. So. Five incredibly, incredibly nice scores, and the really good thing about these is that he's running an average of six point nine gigahertz. <laughs> that's, insane. that's insane. That's insane. Psychotic. It's yeah. just truly psychotic. Like, like uh, honestly, you... if we have a look at the at some of the of the score, uh, this one is from W Prime. Actually, actually, W Prime is like one second point nine six nine, so it's like below two seconds mark. That's, uh, that's yeah, crazy. you blink and yeah. the benchmark is over. It's like, what happened? Is that? <laughs> so the the Core i7-9700K, uh, the, so the Cofidex CPU from Intel on the latest platform is at 6.935, which is like insane for 6 cores yeah. and 12 threads. And yeah. the memory is at uh, above 2,000 two, two megahertz, uh, 12, 11, yeah, 11 which 41. is pretty tight as well. Yeah, for 16 yeah, so gigs. <clears throat> yeah, he's doing the the sort of gold standard for B die of 4133 12 11 11 28. Yeah. Um yeah, but what's really impressive he's managing to do like 6.9 gigahertz for like almost like over a minute for W prime. Yeah, w that, prime. That, look, that's crazy. Look in the window. It's that's, I wonder that, what is his max like, I wonder what is his max frequency for the for that chip. True. Because a chip like this, you don't want to feed too much power to just try to reach the, the max frequency for it. Um, I'm yeah, not sure. I don't think the, the max frequency is that far from it, actually. From that, that, what he's posted so far? Yeah. Might be like 7.05 yeah, I mean, something. Like yeah, one multiplier already, up yeah, he, max. He ran the GPU by 1 billion benchmark at 7, yeah, 7 gig, Over 7 gigahertz, just, yeah, and... That took two minutes, uh, though GPU Pi is uh, is lighter than uh, like a lot of other things out there. It's yeah. not that heavy. Well, no, yeah. don't run next to you at that speed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, that'd be an insta crash. Um, 
So yeah, like uh, yeah, that's a, that's 729 for GPU buy. That's a really, really nice CPU. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's a, and I mean, kudos because he's he's literally got, I don't think there is like even, what, another 10 megahertz in there. Like I don't know. Maybe if, it, if he's you know, playing with uh, the bus speed, maybe that could uh, lead to you know, some... No, like, I just noticed this is a bit old news that these are all top scores because uh, Dan Cop just... Dan Cop. Can, has, yeah, uh, that's one true. Bill and, that's true. So that happened today or yesterday. Yeah. I, I saw actually, his post I took, about how much difference a simple mount can make and like that was yeah. it. That mount gave him the scores. Yep. And uh, Dan Cobb, I, I talked with him just before the show. He's actually uh, watching this on the live chat. Uh, I was like, "Hey, do you want to tease any uh, any scores or anything on the on the show that you haven't posted yet?" It's like, everything I did is already on. <laughs> yeah, and it's seven point one gigahertz for GPU Pi. It's just, you know, that it's what incredible. The like, coffee like Coffee like is showing like really strong. Like yeah. it's ridiculously strong. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like it makes the, the it makes the past six cores look like a bloody joke. <laughs> really? Like we've not had a six core that that clocked it. Like um, maybe the Haswell E's would touch six gigahertz, you know, and then Skylake X would sort of go past six gigahertz. And, and it's just now we're talking about chips doing uh, around seven for seven. the top scores, which is just absolutely insane. That, what we can and see in the difference, up. like Dan Cobb managed to be at 7.1, he touched the bus speed as well. So he cranked yeah, up the uh, by so one megahertz on the bus speed, and uh, that's uh, giving him some uh, extra megahertz and extra memory speed as well. So that might be uh, why he's actually able to kick out Sanino in the, I won't say in the guts, in the yeah, <laughs> but in the I chip. 7020.11R.5. Mean, this... So that yeah, that, Dan, Cobb, Dan Cobb did the score today. And he yeah. says on the left yeah. that he's running 7, uh, 7 gigahertz, 20, 20 for uh, Cinebench R11.5. So, That's yeah. just... <laughs> what the hell, I need dude? to get a coffee what like. Hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, Coffee Lake, it's a good platform. I mean, uh, there's a few things we knew from a uh, few months before with the, some of the information that we had that it will be good. Um, but... As good as this, that's actually a very good surprise. I, I mean, honestly, a lot of people, I think, were expecting it to not be as, uh, like, not clock as high as KB Lake. But it looks like Intel, with their nonstop work on making 14 nanometer the best 14 nanometer ever, <laughs> um, are pulling it off because, you know, we, we haven't lost a single megahertz. In fact, Dan Cop's 8700K is like outclocking uh, some, like, a lot of 7700Ks. <clears throat> yeah, yes, so, it is. It's absolutely like the coffee lake is ridiculous, and and to some extent, I feel uh, you know, if, if you're choosing benching pr- platforms, if you're not going past the ten, like if you're not going for the ten core or higher on X two ninety nine, coffee, coffee lake, lake just kind of invalidates everything else out there. True, because it does everything. <laughs> Thanks yeah, to the clock speed. Like, so unless you're, like, I, I guess for people who would be staying on, like, water cooling, um, you could argue that, yeah, the A-core makes some sense. But the moment you put the A-core and uh, Coffee Lake on liquid nitrogen, Coffee Lake just pulls right away. Yeah, yeah. And Dan Cup even confirmed on the live chat that, yeah, it's actually higher clocking than my B7740X. 40X. So, yeah, that's uh, that's quite insane as a new platform. But it's good to see. Uh, that's going to be very hard for Intel to come back after these. Uh, I kind of feel like we have like I a, don't think like a so. core too. No, I, I, well, I actually, like, no, honestly, they're going to be doing a process change, aren't they? Soon. Yeah, they're supposed to move that to that could that could 12, end up being like nanometer. a Broadwell E 2.0, <laughs> where we just go from like, you know, um, go from really high clocks to like nothing. Yeah. You know, just going from one gen to the next, but because ultimately Intel, like, their priority is going to be, uh, you know, m- maintaining a. Uh, maintaining power efficiency they're not gonna like if 10 nanometer uh t- chews up the top end uh, clock range on liquid nitrogen or something or it gets some horrific cold bug or something they're not gonna like i don't think they're gonna care that much about fixing it right um so we, we might see a drop from like the seven gigahertz range that we're seeing right now to maybe six but i i really hope that doesn't happen because that might like well for coffee lake buyers that would be awesome because the next <laughs> generation of chips is still irrelevant. Um, 
So yeah, we'll see how that turns out in the next uh, in the next few months, if not years, uh, depending on how long that's gonna last. Uh, other big news we have this week is the OCWC, so the Overclocking World Championship final is coming up in uh, very soon. That's gonna be December 9th and 10th. That's gonna be at the Case King HQ in Berlin, uh, same as last year, pretty much. Um, and we have the uh, the the details of how on how that's gonna run and the hardware that's gonna be used and some of the rules as well and this is very interesting as this year that's gonna last uh, two days so the December 9th that's gonna be Saturday uh, day one is qualification phase with round round one and two of the one v one matches uh, there's gonna be as well on Sunday there's gonna be round three so that's basically just saying like this eight. 1v1 matches plus the award ceremony happening on Sunday. There's going to be a lot of things going on there. And there's the uh, double elimination system as well. Uh, so like you can peek back and choose and, and, and things. Uh, in terms of hardware, that's going to be based on, of course, the uh, Intel Core i7-8700K. Uh, that's going to be provided by HWBot. So this way, even if someone have a golden CPU, they cannot use it. Uh, as you know, guys, for the OCWC, it's always like um, random draw to have uh, actually a higher chance of uh, spreading the uh, the luck around and removing the uh, silicon lottery. Um, you can bring your own DDR4, so I guess a lot of people will be uh, coming with BDI. Um, any Z370 motherboard, um, once again, uh, prepare your board. Uh, keep in mind that you're not allowed to use your predefined profile, yours or the one built in the the motherboard. So you cannot use the uh, Danco uh, profile, for example. You have to set it by yourself. I'd be so screwed. <laughs> 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 Just be like, oh, wait, I can't load up the memory profile. Well, like that, I'm done. <laughs> this isn't posting ever again. <laughs> it's like, I cannot load my memory profile. Okay, activate the XMP and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, graphic, graphic card would be the GD710, so that's the one being used for all the OCWC these seasons. Uh, there's going to be, uh, of course, uh, there's going to be on Windows 10. Uh, I guess there's going to be Windows 10 64 bits as well. It's not. Uh, yeah, and, and the all operating systems are. Uh, and all the same, all re, uh, yeah. re image before. That's very important. So there is no. Um, you cannot come no with your own tweak. Yeah, yeah. Everyone have the exact same OS. So th this is something I'm, I really, uh, really appreciate that you have less um, challenges on uh, on trying to find out like a way to. Oh yeah, there's this special tweak or this special tweak. Um, important things: power supply will be the Seasonic 850 watts uh, Snow Silent. So that's the same one that I've been used for all the OCWC qualification this year. Uh, of course, everything else will be uh, like peripherals, monitors, and things. Uh, coding solutions, it says not provided, but uh, well, there's going to be LN2. <laughs> so you have to come with your own LN2. <laughs> no, the LN2 is provided, <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, need to bring your own pot for yeah. it. Uh, I mean, and you cannot bring your own cascade, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you yeah, I will take the plane, get there, and use my own cascade. Like, yeah, sure. It's going to work great. Um, <laughs> In in terms of uh, of benchmark being used, qualification phase will be on X uh, Azure Boot X X two six five ten eighty p three D Mark times by physics reference clock Cinebench R fifteen and Geekbench Geekbench four single core. So that's a lot of benchmark. That's five benchmark when usually in the qualific qualification uh, event you only had three benchmarks. So that's uh, that's good to see a little bit more things. Uh, four hours for the qualification. Then uh, that's going to be like all the matches will be. Um, Will be uh, will be made. A uh, lot of the things have been cleared up from from last year as well. The fact uh, on how you return the CPUs, uh, how it's qual it's uh, validated and and so on by the judges. That's uh, very important, especially at this level, and especially that this time there is cash price. There is actually a cash price for the winner. <clears throat> and let me get that straight. I can't remember. I think it's like a uh, fifteen hundred bucks for. Yeah, it's not it's not in that uh, in that news. Uh, I think it's fifteen hundred bucks for the first one, something like this. And one That's thing I want awesome. us to spend a little bit more time on is the format for this year. Um, so you see that you have, you know, like once against one, etc., and then you can move on to the the loser bracket as well. So the loser bracket will still be able to access the uh, the the end of the. Uh, of the few match and it's not going to be like you lose at the first round and then you're out bye there's still a, a chance for you to to get back in the in the race if you had like a very bad 
uh, bad time, like bad, I won't say bad luck because not about like, uh, like you prepare and everything and then you have condensation issues that you had to unmount and remount everything and you don't have the time to run like all the systems and your opponent actually had a lot of leads for that. So that's uh, that's good to see this way of um, of the loser bracket uh, being implemented as well. That's a lot of matches though. That's going to be a lot of matches uh, to, to be is, held in the... Uh, in the next uh, in, in two days and we can see that on the uh, on the planning i mean on on sunday it's like holy hell <laughs> so there's like round three to round eight and the award ceremony so that's eight matches on uh, on one v one that's going to be quite a lot of things uh the, the staff there will be quite um quite crazy to uh, crazy. to follow to follow <laughs> that uh benchmark wise for the draw list it's pretty big as well so for any of the one v one um uh, any of the 1v1 matches you're gonna have like they, they will have like a random draw and then each of the overclockers will have a veto <clears throat> like I know I don't want this benchmark and the other one says uh, okay I don't want this benchmark either so that's how that's gonna be uh, Azure Robot X265 1080p and 4k uh, 3 mark Ice Storm Skydiver 3 mark 01 GPU by 1 billion uh, 3 mark Time Spy Physics uh, there's going to be a maximum CPU clock, maximum reference clock, maximum memory clock. So that's the... Uh, reference the clock would be interesting, or memory clock. <clears throat> those those both would be interesting, in my yeah. opinion. CPU clock is boring as hell. Actually, reference clock would be, I guess, the trickiest one. Because that's, that's would yeah. be always yeah, know, so that, close. That be, that's going to be like that, 0.5 difference. <laughs> if what? if not, no, no, if no, not the, the same. Is, on KB, no, on coffee, like... On KB, KB is like 0.1. The, the the reference clock yeah like some actually gigabyte has a like point one hundredth of a megahertz clock gen on their motherboards but the thing is you can set those like the reference clock goes really high but it's really hard to do like there's uh, submissions for uh, Z270 with the reference clock as high as like five hundred and fifty megahertz except <laughs> like if you tried to do that on your own it's just like the, the it's such is so different from your usual overclocking that it would be really interesting to see how that would work out um a memory clock is also another kind of interesting one yeah uh, it's in, it, in like a short period of time it's kind of like in, in some ways it's a bit boring but it's it's, less it's okay it lasts only clock. 30 minutes so as uh, yeah it, i think it's it's not 45 yeah it's 30 minutes per round uh so maximum clock for cpu reference on memory it's fun but no more than 30 minutes. I mean, don't do that for six hours. That's super boring. And I did three hours of max memory <laughs> clock. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, but you, no, you were not thing, in competition. Memory yeah. clock, like if you bench memory clock, what you'll notice is like you, you'll, you'll go to like, you'll get like you'll wall at some frequency really early. Right? And you'll just hit a wall and then you do something and it randomly goes higher. <laughs> So it's like I was uh, when I was last doing max memory clock, I got stuck at like forty six hundred, right? And then I just decided, uh, like after, then at some point I was like, okay, so this is not working, and I just decided to skip from like forty six hundred to forty eight hundred, right? And it booted, which was like, hmm, I have no idea why that works, but cool, <laughs> let's keep going. Um, so yeah, and and it would be nice to see like somebody who actually knows what they're doing. Uh, do like a max memory clock attempt instead of like my my because it was the first time ever I did it, which is why I think that would be an interesting stage to watch. Um, well, uh, by the way, there's not going to be any live, so no one will be able to watch that. Yeah, but I'm going to fly guys. myself there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Uh, well, I'm going to see if I can, uh, you know, fly in and uh, get get. Uh, I'm not even sure. Tra- I'm not even sure I can fly there. So yeah. Uh, we're I mean, just going to discuss yeah, about that in the after party. So. Uh, Sunnybench R11.5, R15, uh, Geekbench 3 and 4 multi core, uh, GPU, Pi 4 CPU, 100M, uh, uh, Geekbench 3 and 4 single core, and Super Pi 8M. And there was some question from Dan Cup uh, on the chat. Um, tell us this uh, 3D01 thing. That would be a GPU bench with a GD710. Sure, why not? <laughs> You know, the other one I don't personally lo- like, similar uh, issue is uh, 3D Mark Ice Storm is weird. <laughs> like, I'm just going to put that out there. It's such a weird benchmark. Um, for one thing, like, changing your monitor resolution changes the score of Ice Storm, which I think is completely ridiculous. The second thing is changing your uh, monitor refresh rate also changes the score of Ice Storm. Like, it increases it, which is just like, I hate that benchmark. 
I benched it for some competition this year, and I hate it, like, never again. Like, if, if Ice Storm is in any competition ever, I'm not doing it. Because <laughs> it's just, like, it's... It's like, I don't like the, like, the thing is, if it was just monitor frequency, I wouldn't complain. But when changing the the monitor resolution changes the outcome of the benchmark so much, it's just like this bench, like, it's not a benchmark. Because it's just like, you end up just fighting over who can set, like, the lower resolution at some point. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, I, that's crazy. Like, uh, I was setting up resolutions for, like, 100 by 100 pixels because the score kept going up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and launching the benchmark was a fight because it was like this big square on the screen and it's like, where's the start button? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was other question from Dan Cup on the chat. Um, how does that work with the run and things? Because that's the first time that is actually in the uh, OCWC format. So, um, for example, first match here, 8th against ninth. So that's going to be the 8th people rank in the, uh, in the qualifier against the ninth ranked in the qualifier so that will be the first match the winner of the first match will advance to the next match the loser of that match will be l1 so then we have two and sevens fighting together for second match the winner will move on the loser will go against the loser of the first match so that's how it's uh, it's paired so if you lose one match you always have a second match then to uh, to decide on how, on how it is so that's uh that's good and that's good that it's not only four people doing the one v one, but uh, like the eight, the eight qualifier or nine people being qualified uh, that will be able to uh, can I say that the the tenth contestant will be able to do the one v one. So that's what I'm trying I'm trying to say. So that's actually good to have like a the qualifier will be basically like. You get there, you qualify. You know you will have a one v one match at least. So that's uh, one of the uh, one of the way to uh, to get everyone involved. So that's very good from HW, but pretty like it. Uh, I like the format. I hope that uh, there's going to be uh, more more things like that and more things that we can cover in the in the near future. And I'm pretty sure that's actually more ent entertaining as well for people watching. I mean, a lot of people have been asking if we uh, if we're going to do a live for for the OCWC. As of now, the answer is no. There is no budget for it. Uh, but I hope I do I'm gonna hope that I'm going to try fly myself in and you can get like a buildzoid level production stream quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the issue is the capture. I'll just walk around with a camera and go yeah. like, oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> uh, YouTube like. <laughs> uh, one thing about the OCWC final, there is the predict the winner contest as well. Uh, it's on HW, but just go check it out. We're going to post the link in, uh, in, the, in the live chat. And uh, basically, select who you think will win, share the news, blah, blah, blah. And if you're one of the lucky winner, you might win some uh, Seasonic gears. So I guess it's uh, Seasonic only. No, it's uh, Seasonic, Asking, and Intel. So that's the, uh, the overall uh, partners uh, for that. So that's, uh, that's good to see. A lot of familiar faces and uh, two completely new faces, uh, Blue Fiber from Indonesia, as well as Jordan I-99 from uh, Australia. So that's going to be good to see how they can actually do something in this kind of uh, of environment. Yeah. Whew, that's a lot of news for the uh, OCWC. Uh, let's move on to Linus did an OC guide uh, overclocking its mainstream. It, it, do you think that's uh, that, that's what do you be, that's what you believe, Tullius? Well, well, I mean, I mean, it's 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 just basically uh, the fact that it was sponsored by Intel. You know, the fact that they want him to push it is nice to see. Especially after the video that he put out a few months ago, but uh, regardless, I mean, it's it's good to see popular YouTubers at least talking about overclocking. Uh, I mean, they don't. The, the thing is, Linus Tech Tips. I as when I watched them, they would put out overclocking guides for like every platform, if my memory serves me correctly. So yeah. it's not that different for them to do this, but. Um, yeah, the, the whole sponsorship by Intel is just like, well, I mean, Intel is sponsoring like the whole um, world tour thing as well. So Intel's yeah. obviously interested in selling more ridiculously overpriced CPUs. <laughs> and we're happy to oblige as long as they break all the records. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, but uh, the actual video, I watched it. Um, I didn't find it that useful. <laughs> but I guess for new people, it, it was... Uh, like for X299, it did cover a lot of the things like the fact that you now have the per core uh, multipliers, um, which you actually had on Broadwelly as well, but you also didn't have per core voltage. And they, they did mention that like on the, the new platform, like it makes sense to have a full custom water loop for these chips because they run yeah. so hot. <laughs> as, yeah. 
I've recently had a chance to experience. Well, they don't run, it's not so much running so hot, it's more like they put out so much heat that you need one hell of a cooling system. So, you know, it was a it was a good introduction. I mean, ultimately, there's not that much to overclocking if you just do the sort of daily water-cooled, you know, water-cooled, air-cooled overclock on the CPU. Cool. Um, it starts getting more advanced when you start messing with things like the uh, memory and trying to, chew, like, take down, be like, benchmark scores because then you're trying, like, ragged ed edge of stability instead of, like, um, you know, it has to pass this really heavy stress test. Yes. Which, where if it's a fail, it's a fail, and you just move on. And trying to, you know, beat 10 megahertz out of the system really isn't worth it for a daily OC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I, did, but, I, mean, I did watch the video as well, and the only thing I, I was a bit confused was, it's still good to the BIOS. Yeah, for sure, that's the best way to, that's the best efficient way to do it. But I was expecting that is as, if, if, if this is for people that never did that before, I just want to tune lightly, I'd, you could have just stick with XTU, and that's one thing. But yeah. the second thing is more like, oh yeah, it's still a complex process if you want to have like a stable th systems. Like, can you just just explain because you 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 can run Prime ninety five and say, oh yeah, that's good enough. Your PSU will be good enough. Stuff like this. So I was uh, I was a bit like, okay, that's good, that's cool. Uh, more people will uh, hear about that and hear about the the hobby. That's perfect. Uh, but I was like, meh. Oh, by the way, blue screen. <laughs> Actually, I watched the video and you did the blue screen and I yelled that at home. <laughs> You're going insane. That's fine. <laughs> I don't see what you mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's good stuff for, uh, for no, actually spreading the word out of it. I mean, that um, last week there was um, Vince going to Jace to send to do some liquid nitrogen overclocking. Uh, Linus Tech Tips have a team now on HWBot as well. So that's a, a lot of... Uh, Haven't they had a team for ages? They now had housing? one, but there there, there was some discussion on the, on Discord. Like, there, there are five people in there, so... The, I mean, the goal is to, like, to get more people. It's even less of a team than, like, the Czech national team. <laughs> 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 if um, there was Team Czech Republic, it'd be dead. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice if, uh, like, the... Because ultimately, they still just did that video as a sort of, like, overclocking for daily. Which, um, you know, it doesn't... It doesn't show the the extreme side of overclocking, at yeah. all. So I, I don't see it as like I don't really see as uh, see it as some groundbreaking new thing for Linus Tech Tips to do. So yeah, and actually, uh, Mikkel to confirm on the uh, on the live chat. Yes, there's uh, I think that's Yosar uh, Linde. I can't remember his name. Like a very long one. Actually, usually on the live chat as well. Uh, one of the guys from our overclocking Discord uh, is trying to get the LTT team to organize a bit more and post scores, etc. But keep in mind, uh, Linus Tech Tips audience is the uh, general one, so it's quite mainstream. The thing is, the fact to the, the things we use to post the score is very boring and painful. Uh, that's the main reason why I don't post, uh, post scores myself. So once that, that's going to be solved, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, rookies in XTU and all that, uh, just because it's e easier and uh, more accessible to, uh, to post the scores. Um, good stuff. Um, so last week was J. Susan, this week is Linus. Next week, that's going to be Paul Hardware or Bitwit. I don't know. Uh, I mean, any, the, those channels, the like, they all make overclocking, guys. They're just really, really basic. So... Yeah. I, I really don't like the 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 Jay Z two cents thing. That I think was actually like that was some nice uh, exposure to like extreme overclocking um, for a lot of people. But the general overclocking guides that we see from like every YouTube channel ever, eh. <laughs> like seriously, eh. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, so. this uh, uh, Linus says you don't see the Linus says that. He, you see no interest or don't see the point in extreme OC for daily usage, of course. For competitive sides, once again, if you have never watched a match or you never played with LN2, he will be like, meh. Um, actually, that reminds me the uh, the things we did at DreamHack here for the uh, SWBot World Tour in Montreal. We we did XOC Academy, so we did Extreme Overclocking Workshop with people that 
knew already how to do overclocking, like the very basic one. So I had uh, Carl, I had uh, Marco Frenert, I have some of the of the YouTubers guys from uh, from Montreal and uh, and Boston that were trying that out, and they were like, I never had any interest in in that before because I didn't knew how to do it. it. Seems complex. It seems very niche, and when you try to do it, it's it's actually fun, but then you have all the other the, all the other um, things that came into mind, like uh, you need to have a CPU port, you need to have an LN2 supplier, you need to have <laughs> insulation system, you need to have a spare board <laughs> because it's not your daily PC. So yeah, different uh, different stuff as uh, as usual. Um, speaking of Intel, uh, there's something that Intel uh, on Anon Tech, uh, Intel is to use additional assembly and text factory to improve supply of Coffee Lake CPUs. What's going on with that? Basically, Basically. Okay, yeah, build do it first and you then go, I go. Yeah, build do it, go on. Okay, so basically, um, Intel can, like, Intel makes chips out of silicon, right? They chop, the, they they make the chips on a wafer, they chop up the wafer, and then they send that wafer, uh, Then, well, they actually probably don't even chop it up. They send that finished wafer off to a uh, another factory. Assembly factory. Which basically tests that all the dyes are working, or how much they are working, and if they aren't working enough, then they turn them into i5s or i7s, or you know th they do the uh, chip conversion. They also take all of the actual chips and put them onto substrates, and they do all of the packaging. They they, they install the IHS with the terrible thermal paste, <laughs> you know. And uh, so Intel is basically getting a uh, another uh, assembly, and well, basically. Uh, they're getting another factory to do this for Coffee Lake because to improve supply. So it looks so which like means, which means that they're fabbing enough chips. They're just not getting them into C, like into you know you buyable fast CPUs enough. fast enough. Yeah. So so that means for for everyone that's that don't know what like uh, how that supplies. So you create the you have the wafer, you create the the die, and then that die needs to go on the package, and then that package needs to be packaged and bundled into boxes and tray. If that's a if that's a thing, so that's why you always have like two prices. And I guess that Intel say, okay, we are producing a lot of coffee lakes, but we are not um, we're not managing oh. to actually send them out of the factory fast enough. Uh, where's the bottleneck? And it seems that the bottleneck is when they put the uh, die on the package if I'm right. Yeah. So once yeah. you have that scaled up, you we should, should be I... seeing a lot more coffee like available at retail, basically. So there this is go. good news. And maybe the the demand was uh, I don't know if it's just because of the yield they had or the if the demand is higher or if they had some like a factory that was being. Uh, well, I mean, Intel point. did, like, we know that Intel actually pulled in the Coffee Lake launch. So it could have very much been that they, you know, since they were launching a bit early, um, initially yields weren't, like, they were on early yield levels or something. Like, it wasn't quite as high as they wa wanted yield for full launch. And so since they pulled the launch in a bit early, we saw uh, the, like, we saw basically it was really hard to get Coffee Lake for a while at retail. And now that things, you know, the, that were a few months after the launch, yields might have improved. And now they're like, okay, we need more testing facility, uh, more more testing and packaging facilities because now we actually have enough chips to ship out. We just aren't shipping them enough while packaging them up fast enough. Yeah, more of the 6700K story. Even the 6700K was so hard to find initially for the first couple of months when they launched. Like, they were incredibly tough to find even, even, even here in India. So more of the same. I mean, yeah, and obviously the fact that them pulling it in didn't help their case at all. <laughs> I like the comment on the live chats, like, so that's where the thermal toothpaste is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, so by the way, somebody with... should find that plant and replace all, like, replace all of their thermal supply. With that. <laughs> I think I, I, I'll be honest with the amount of people deleting CPUs and the mainstream reach of that thermal paste issue, I'm. I think if Intel is, is capable of uh, not having thermal paste, I mean, if it's financially uh, like viable and uh, makes sense for, for the business, I think they might actually just drop the thermal paste and just uh, solder things uh, back in. So See, we still don't know exactly why they choose the thermal like, paste. Here's the thing. Intel keeps complaining about some kind of manufacturing uh, issue with the uh, soldering, right? And... 
So, you know, I, I don't really think... Like, I, I'd find it really hard to believe that they're trying to just be cheap stakes. Right? Because it's like... how Soldering, yeah, it takes a lot more work to do, but... I, like it's a difficult process, but I don't think it was just a hundred. No, but that was done uh, for you know, that was done decision. for previous CPUs. Yeah, but that is still previous... done with most of the like the I think the Xeon are still soldered. Yeah, are they? I, the Xeon Gold may the like the, the, the top, top of the line Xeon. one. Yeah, yeah, the top of the lines one. So yeah, of course it's more expensive to do solder. That there's other things that we might not know. I mean. Um, Der Bauer did a very nice article and videos about like uh, the difference in the the kind of mixture you use for the thermal paste and things that you cannot use, uh, like the expansions and rejections. That was more for NN2, uh, but if you take that as the manufacturing process, I mean, if you want to solder things, you need to have like one specific line just for soldering the chip. So that's one more thing as well. So we'll know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, we don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, I think it'd be more likely that Intel starts shipping like delitted case queues or something. <laughs> so it's it, like CPU in like, tray, you just and you have the, the AHS on the other side. <laughs> yeah, that might just yeah, have something. Like, because the main problem, like, ultimately, you still need that IHS because the like the, the chips are like trying to mount a heatsink direct die is just a massive pain and really risky. And especially uh, with the size of the circuits and the size of the cooler that we have. I mean, yeah, the last, then, the then last Intel few ones we had... On like a super thin PCB, which flexes. Yeah. So like if you try to direct die a, a KB, like the PCB will flex so much that it'll actually lift out the outer edges of the contacts. So you can't actually boot like that because the chip's not hooked up. Um, but yeah, I, like... I'm pretty sure Intel could figure out some way to get around the whole, you know, they're a big company. They have a lot of engineers. They can fix exactly. these. Actually, that's the Without point. Necessarily if, they, if, they, older. if they did not do it, there is a good reason for it. <laughs> and it's not because we want like five cents more uh, profit per CPU. I, I don't... mean, if they didn't put thermal paste, like if they literally just shipped IHS and pa chip package without any thermal paste, that would save money. Right, you don't need to glue it together. You don't need to pay for thermal paste. It depends. Yeah. Would that save money if you only do that? Yes. Will that save money for everyone else? No, because you need two separate lanes, two separate product numbers, two separate system of delivery. No, no, no. Just more all the case queues like that. Oh, no, like no, no, all the case queues are pre-deleted. Yeah, just do all the yeah. case queues. You get a case queue without without any uh, IHS or thermal paste. <laughs> Actually, well, no, you get the IHS but no thermal paste and there's no epoxy on it. Any, uh, if you think any about that, that, from Intel, since Pentium 4, there is IHS. The only CPU from Intel that don't have IHS are the mobile ones because you need to have like a, this uh, super low, this super, super thin, yeah, and one. you have like all the, all the other issues that you don't want to have AHS on, on CPUs inside the mobile platform. But since Pentium 4, they have IHS. The last one I use that do not have IHS without removing, uh, like, that you buy and that doesn't have any IHS was the Atlan XP. So there's a good reason yeah. why we have IHS. But yeah, now it makes you not break the chip. <laughs> that's the whole point. So for them, maybe... But the, the thing no. is, like, the... The problem in the past was that if you mount a cooler, right, which is like a big, heavy, you know, heat sink, and when you mount that and you literally lean it slightly to the side of the die or anything, it crushes the edges. Right? Yeah, that was the main issue with, without you, having that, the IHS. That was one of the yeah. main concerns. But with uh, delitted chips, like, you still put the IHS in between. So that risk is kind of eliminated. So I feel like, you know, it wouldn't be... Actually, I, mean, I wonder one thing. What if you have the chip? And you just have right. like a like a ring big, around it, big pad around. Yeah, it. like yeah, a, no, not a pad, like 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 the IHS, but not covering the uh, the die. Here's the thing: like from a manufacturing perspective, you'd need to get like that perfectly flat, uh, perfectly flat, so that the heatsink doesn't end up being like either resting on the metal shim or the the die being taller, and you still having the crush risk. Um, but there's the, so, the, 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 the way the pressure apply, it will always like bend the middle CPU if you don't have IHS, but if you have the IHS, it will actually bend actually more on the side and push. If, if you, if you just think about well, how once you, push you remove the, the glue, it basically bend, I think it still bends the, the PCB a bit, but it just stops oh, it yeah. before it becomes yeah. a problem. 
Yeah, I mean, I've had because they the, the like Intel ships here. the chips with the epoxy there, and actually, it's been tested that like removing the epoxy does more for the thermal performance than uh, than uh, than changing the thermal paste on alone. Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, I've 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 also seen the the sixty seven hundred K's bend really badly. Chips that had the epoxy had less of an issue with the bending, and the chips that didn't have the epoxy and I mean where it was removed had a, had slightly more issues with the whole bending and stuff like that. Well, that's one thing we don't know. We'll see. Uh, we have to wait for the next uh, next package, and we don't know how many pins that's gonna be. And we don't know uh, how like heavy or thin the uh, the package will be. So we'll see yeah. what uh, what is there. So good article it from sucks uh, that the PCB became thinner. That, that, <laughs> that sucks. Direct connection to the die. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, other news from uh, this week. Uh, Z390 motherboard spotted. What What the hell is that? We, we just have Z370 and now we have Z390. What's that? So Intel's got the... Apparently they've got 8 core, uh, 8th generation, whatever they're going to call them, CPUs coming. So, in competition with Ryzen kind of a thing. So, they'll have a mainstream 8 core CPU in 2018 at some point in the first half. And so, the whole the whole leak came from, uh, well, they noticed a Supermicro Z390 motherboard in, uh, in the database where it was submitted. And that's where the leak came from. But interesting that... They're doing a special a special chipset for the eight core, and that just confuses everything, because now we have a Z three seventy that'll do the six core and the quad. Yeah, it'll do everything so, else. So, but okay, okay, let's, let's 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 make this clear. As of now, we that's just rumors, right? As of now, nothing is confirmed. Yeah. I so, mean, it could very well be that the 390 runs, I mean, it, it'll obviously, that, you know, it could possibly even run the 6-core and stuff, but will the Z370 be able to run the 8-core? That remains to be seen. So, we'll see. And maybe that's just like a... Because I, I don't know. What what could they, in like, activate to have, like, Z390 uh, motherboard being sold instead of the Z370? Like, what kind of other features could they add up? More PCI Express uh, they lanes. They can make stuff not work <laughs> on Z370. No, no, no. That that's that would be like very, uh, very bad. Especially after the uh, the few marketing drama they had in the in the recent month. Um, yeah. So Z370, they, they could Asus, activate more lanes. Asus but said they could make it work if Intel let them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just they will always try to figure out things. I mean, especially with the uh, R and D. Honestly, I was also hearing apparently that Azrock wanted to. Uh, that there was plans to like make the Z one seventy M OCF compatible with coffee, like, but wow. like, yeah, there was apparently there was plans because the socket works, right? And it's ultimately it's just up to Intel to say like, and then from a the Asus statement, right, with uh, Z two seventy, they're like, yeah, we could totally make it work. The problem is you'd need a BIOS update. And, and Intel then, yeah. would need to let the chip work in the motherboard. Yeah, you need the microcode. Yeah, there's like a software for that thing. Now. There's a software lock from Intel which Intel would have to get rid of. But um, maybe, maybe work. that's why. Maybe that's that's why now they come up, they come up with the Z three ninety thing. So this well, way so it's like it supports maybe like coffee at the same time. Man, <laughs> who knows? Maybe that's what they want to do. That'd be the silliest thing ever. But it's like nah, okay, we have a new higher hand platform that supports previous generation chip when our lower end platform which is supposed to be cheaper don't support previous generation chip that will confuse everyone <laughs> I, yeah that'd be ridiculous and plus why like the board is still like it's not going to add more well they could put more pcie onto the chipset again but it's still hooked up to the cpu through that four pcie equivalent uh, dmi link right so it's still yeah. get, like you're not getting more bandwidth, and the CPU still only has 16 PCIe lanes. So you're not getting more PCIe lanes. What's the point? <laughs> True. What I heard is it's maybe carrying okay. May, maybe the have... Ethernet. Yeah, go on. Sorry, please. go on. It's carrying like 10 gig Ethernet or 5 gig Ethernet built in, and some other some other upgrades. But <laughs> like, like <I> red, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that is activated on X299. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what again? Raid. Oh, raid. 
<laughs> it's like, ah, uh, no, that's not gonna work. No, maybe uh, one thing that could be easy is like the, uh, because allegedly there's an eight core CPU from Coffee Lake coming up um, later on and that's pretty sure it's coming. Uh, maybe that's a uh, power delivery um, requirement because when they did yeah, the, they announced the, the platform. Setup, great. Because maybe the they want to make sure that the platform delivery things is like oh yeah so you need to have these special features and this and this and that I mean, or maybe the FIVR is is updated I don't know which would be very oh, weird on the same architecture have a fiber. unless unless Z three nine unless Z three ninety adds a fiber they don't have a fiber right now um, I don't know maybe they they upgrade something in the in the CPU design officially I don't know anything. Like this, if if they literally just change the chipset and do nothing to the socket, this is like pointless, completely pointless. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think is exactly what's going to happen because that's what we've already seen going from like Z two seventy to Z three seventy is like yeah, it's the same socket. We just uh, like a few pins that we didn't use before. Yeah, they're now power. Or they will do an Nvidia thing, or an ATI thing. Get the same thing and just rebrand. Well, like Z390 is literally Z370 with like a few minor tweaks and new name. Could be. That could work. Could be. Yeah, I mean, they work. have to go against X399 and X390 and X370. So it's, I, as my point of view... We're going to have X470 by the time this stuff comes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe they just leak that on purpose and they say, and they come out like, or, this is 490. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you never saw that one coming, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, it's just a name, so it doesn't really like yeah matter that much. Um. <laughs> oh my god! All right, um, last news of this show: Future Mark coming up with VR Mark. The new room is called Cyan Room. Um, Bilzo, do you want to take it or to use? Okay, Tullius, Builder, you have cool. no idea what we're yeah. talking about. So what's going on, Tullius, with, with this one as well? So Future Mark will be releasing Cyan Room on November 22nd for everyone. Yeah. You get but a new benchmark, you get a new benchmark, everyone gets a new benchmark. <laughs> Yay! It's more targeted towards having a more uniform VR benchmark, I guess, because it, it, like what the whole uh, description says is, that yeah, you can use it with, of course, a, a head-mounted thing, or you can use it even without. And um, it should it 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 should theoretically let people who are into VR and who are building systems for VR at least come to or, some sort or of. Or if you already have a system for VR, like yeah. if you have a system and you're not sure if you can run VR, you can run, run this. VR. Yeah. So this should be able to tell you whether you're good to go, and it's pure DirectX 12, which is nice. So that's. So that's, I mean, that's about it with this, with this, with this whole bench. I mean, I wonder if we're going to start seeing VR benches on each of the bot get points. This is one place where overclocking could theoretically contribute to yep. overall. Yeah, both, big time. Yeah. Big time. Uh, especially in VR, as everything needs to be super reactive uh, because of the yeah. of the motion sickness and, and all that. That's not something we yeah. can really like bench because even if you do, I do this, then that, and then you start again and you bench, I do this then that you will never move the exact same way. Same so way. you will never be able to benchmark the headset just based on, uh, you will just base that on, well, on, on spec. I mean, if you were like, if you were a publication specifically for testing VR, you could always rig up like a robot to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, like a specific robotic arm and, and all that. But you will, yeah, it would be very difficult to feel the motion sickness as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah, I mean, I guess you could, uh, well, yeah, you, you just have to rely that like the the test data gives you a good enough indication of what it feels like to humans or something. Because, yeah, that that would be hard. But I mean, it's like the whole uh, like what we had with Crossfire and SLI, where you could get like a million FPS, um, and it would still look really janky because you know you it was stuttering the frames. Like you'd have two frames basically come out at the same time, so it rendered half of one, half of the second, and then you'd still wait for like the same amount of delay as if you were at a lower frame rate. Actually, so. speaking of uh, of uh, multi multi GPU configuration, uh, Nvidia will. I'm I'm pretty sure that will completely dismantle the uh, the four way thing. I mean, pretty much no one 
use SLI anymore because it's like in the games you don't have that many yeah, uh, nobody advantage wants to anymore. It it's just a pain of, of uh, synchronizing all the frames and all that. So good technology from 3DFX that got bought out by uh, NVIDIA and then implemented as SLI. But uh, I... I mean, the four-way things, you have to hook around some of stuff in the driver to make it work, and it's like, when it works. Yeah, because <laughs> NVIDIA officially doesn't support four-way already. They yeah. literally, straight up, like, it's, you can make it work on your own time if you want to, but we're not going to help you. Um, two-way, uh, we're, we're kind of seeing everybody phase out two-way as well. Like, AMD on Vega, they're just like, yeah, it goes to two-way and past that. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, you don't, <laughs> it's not like you have, like, it's not because you have two graphic cards that you have twofold your FPS. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not that kind of uh, improvement. And especially like, theoretically, for technology like this. theoretically, it could work that well. <laughs> Practically, the amount of software that need, like the, the amount of work in software that needs to be done to make that work, is way beyond anything anybody's willing to do. <laughs> I like the questions. Why do they still build SLI boards anyway? Because marketing. It's a good stamp on extra on the board. Yeah. And, and there's people and like me who run for like yeah. SLI works, dual cards work for pro use and things like that, but for gaming it's just yeah, really it's rendering for use. sure. Rendering for, for sure. For rendering, it's really easy. Like you can assign like the alternate f uh, frame technique, right? right. Is yeah. a problem yeah. for like 3D rendering because you have a fixed amount of frames that you need to render to make your animation work. It's like, okay, I have a a, a movie I'm rendering. Right, and it's a six minutes long movie and it runs at 30 FPS. There's this many frames and you just give one frame to the one card, the next frame to the other card. And when each of them finishes, you give them both a new frame. And frame. you don't need yeah. to worry about like synchronizing when each frame comes out. You don't need to worry about, uh, you know, mirroring texture data or whatever. Like, doesn't matter. Literally yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. um, but and in games, it's just like... In games, like, games honestly, you don't gain written. that much. Because it never worked. You, you right? will it's have more like 3D Mark. The 3D you... Mark in the right perfect in the perfect scenario, 3D Mark 11 or 3D Mark Fire Strike um, at a high resolution where you're not bottlenecking the CPU because you're not running over like 100 FPS. Going from 25 to 50 by literally just taking a second GPU, doable. However, 3D Mark right is like a benchmark where 99% of the software dev time is just like we need to make this work really really good at rendering. We don't care about gameplay because there isn't any, right? Yeah, and and game developers, it's just like sometimes, like some the freaking game developers can barely get games to run well on one card, much less two. <laughs> True, right? that's it's why like, I have some studios too. like id Tech where they have amazing, like they get amazing games with amazing graphics and they run great on like almost well one card. I don't think it may doesn't Doom support? I've not tried if it supports Crossfire very well. Doom but, is epic, bro. It just works with everything. Like I'm, like yeah. I mean, So you have some studios where they're like basically as good as 3D Mark at making every single possible configuration work, and then you well, have like other studios where it's like, oh, uh, um, you're using something, you're doing sl something slightly wrong. The game's gonna run at 40 FPS. Deal I, with. Yeah. I think we started a, f yeah. a, a flame war on the on the live chat, like people for and against SLI. Okay. Two-way SLA, so two cards in the systems, could work if games are optimized well for it. Otherwise, yes. you better overclock the, the one card you have or spend the extra cash in getting the higher grade yeah. one rather than actually buying two for that. If you have two I... and you streams, maybe use one for gaming, one for rendering the frames. Maybe. Uh, there's Oh, use one for gaming, the other one for mining. I don't know. Just in, yeah. in my... In, okay. I, I love seeing four-way SLI systems, big time. The only thing They're is, they, they it, it's really irrelevant. Awesome. It's irrelevant. It Most of work. the motherboards <laughs> that need to support that don't exist on the market anymore because no one wants to bother with the PLX chip. And especially now that we have NVMEs, I mean, or, uh, you don't want X to have NVMEs through the PLX chip. That doesn't work well. Uh, like, yeah. no, you don't want that. So, well, that's why no one is doing that kind of motherboard anymore for four-way. NVIDIA doesn't support that anymore officially. Uh, two-way cards, well, actually, you have two 1070. I will suggest just uh, sell one. <laughs> Keep the best one, sell the other one. <laughs> Honestly, like buying two Or bench with the other one. 
No, buying two no, 1070s I mean, no. out from the get-go is just dumb. You should just buy a 1080 Ti. It costs the same the same amount of money. Um, yeah, yeah, I I would I I seriously. I mean, I I would agree with you. I I I actually struggle with this quite a bit because now. I like to play a bunch of games. Gears of War sucks if you put two GPUs in your system. Like the performance is worse with two GPUs. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of games like that. I remember yeah. Assassin. I think it's there's like a very specific Assassin's Creed, um, which I remember seeing benchmarks from Tech Power Up for it, where you went one GPU and you got like 60 FPS. You got two GPUs, you got say. 30 FPS, you want four yes. 30 GPUs, you get 20, and by the time you hit four away, you're at 15 FPS. It would literally chew up your frame rate as you went in, up in uh, card count, because and the game was so bad at dealing with the multi-GPU setup. True. Then there's a lot of games where, you know, um, they'll technically, like, they'll put load on both of your graphics cards at the same time, but it doesn't actually make a frame rate improvement, frame or rate the improvement. frame rate is so inconsistent, it looks terrible anyway. Um, yeah. Planet Side 2 yeah. did yeah. this yeah. when I ran Crossfire in the past. It was like, I'd disable Crossfire completely for that one. Um, because if I had it enabled, yeah, the FPS was at like... It, the FPS wasn't bad, but it was stuttering so, so much, bad. you couldn't yeah. play it. Um, and, and that has just been a plague for Crossfire and SLI for SLI. ages. Like every SLI so often, to a lesser extent, actually. But yeah, even even well, I, even, if, even, yeah, like SLI did did have uh, they had less stutter, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. in terms of actual game support, it was just as bad. <laughs> Except I think bad. Nvidia exactly. didn't tend exactly. to have the exactly. issue where the yeah. performance went down. Yeah, that, I think was pretty yeah. unique to AMD. Actually, uh, that's, a, that's a good point, and um, I think that it was Justified Paranoia that had a, a question on the live chat. It's like, uh, doesn't DirectX 12 will actually solve that multi-GPU things? I encourage uh, you... DirectX like, 12 on, solves it. On paper, it's supposed to help. In fact, in real life, there's so, so less usage for it that actually no one is optimizing for that. No. And if you go on the... Uh, the thing is, the X12, so the, the previous SLI and Crossfire was like basically hacked onto um, the existing DirectX, right? It, it was basically entirely done driver side um, and game side. So it wasn't like DirectX didn't support it officially. You couldn't do it. So that was a um, hook on top of DirectX to make it work. Yeah. And then now we have DirectX 12, and DirectX 12 does have built-in multi-GPU support. However, because of how DirectX 12 works, it's not like the driver can't force dual GPUs to work, right? So you're entirely reliant on the game developer writing yes. dual yes. GPU functionality, triple GPU functionality, Bang or four-way, five-way, six-way, eight-way, you know, eight-way. And in the, the best world, have you have this. the exact same one. Have but you noticed how code developers kind of suck at optimizing stuff when there's one card or more than <laughs> one core but, or more than one of anything, but really? That's the, that's the thing. When you develop a game, and I think that's going to be the last topic of uh, the last uh, thing we're going to say in the in this show, when you de when the game, the game developers develop the game, they have to fit for such a wide range of things, like one CPU yeah, with two, it, two... 18 cores with a, or without hyper trading I mean, with honestly, one with card with multiple like shaders not or not. Like, like, actually, Threadripper, there's, I think there's a few games which outright crash on Threadripper because they're not capable of dealing with the whole non-uniform memory access. Yeah. They're just like, what the... It's like, oh wait, what? There's two eight cores? How the hell does this, how does this work? Blue screen. <laughs> Does Or doesn't poke, like, like doesn't start. <laughs> which is just like, you know, the, these, like, you can't give these things more cores, you can't ask them to make more GPUs work. Like, seriously, until recently, you know, games ran on two cores. They literally just ran on two cores. And even now, it's like very complex games like MMOs and strategy games hog one core. They don't yeah. hog multiple cores because it's just too hard to synchronize all of the uh, all of the game logic across more than one core. So it's just like, well, we're just going to do everything on one core. And then it's like, ask the same people who have problems dealing with, like, spreading their workload across, like, you know, this is CPU stuff. That should be relatively easy to multi-thread. We've had multi-core CPUs for ages and ages and ages. They're super common. And you want the same developers to now start working on multi-threading, like, actually 
multi GPUing like, their render. Like honestly, engine? as of today no. with the trend, they will be spending more time in making sure they have a uh, better multi threading for the CPU because yeah. the the average number of cores available on the platform overall on the market will increase with the Ryzen CPUs, with the new Coffee Lake CPUs, with all the different yeah. things that we have. So in the next few years, I, I bet for the next three to five years, all the games that will come out will be more optimized for higher core count CPUs. Uh, so like going from actually, it used to be two yeah. and four, now there's gonna be six and I, I, I think we might see a return to multi-GPU when Nvidia and AMD hit a hard wall like a really hard wall in terms of getting more performance. Like the, the chips are so damn big, it just doesn't make sense to make them any bigger or something. And then they're like, okay, well- <laughs> Because put there's more people paying chip. for it. Of course that makes <laughs> sense. Right? Like, it, it's like the, the moment we run into, because right now, um, you know, we're getting good performance advancements from just making bit better and better single GPUs. You don't need more graphics cards right now. Um, well, you do in some cases, but it's like, they're so niche that nobody cares. The day when, you know, we can't, when, when the, when the, you know, 10,080 Ti or something, wait, yeah, 10,080 10, 10, Ti, 80 TI, like, that's going to be 11, like 11,080 Ti are separated by 5% difference in performance, NVIDIA will start working on making SLI work, so you can buy four of your, their 1180 Ti. You know, that's that's how it's going to work. Uh, um, but right yeah. now you see like what still we're getting like 30, 40 percent performance jumps, uh, you know, on top end releases for graphics cards. So I don't see the point, which is basically as much as you would get from a working two way setup. Anyway, they're not going to bother with making multi GP work. What sucks <laughs> is that. Well, if you play 4K today and if you're playing one of these heavy duty games, there's no way you get like maxed out. Sure, if you cut down the details, then it works. But even with the 1080 Ti, I struggle it. I struggle at 4K with certain games, and those games have broken SLS support. So it's like, right now, <laughs> we'll see, it's, it's, hardware, okay, guys, uh, it's unplayable. Uh, we, yeah? the, it's the thing is, on a single card, two years, two years. The, the, the thing is, with all that, it's not always a matter of raw performances of the GPU. There's the bandwidth of the memory as well. But uh, you know what? We're just going to discuss all the... Because we have to to close the show for the recording and uh, upload that to YouTube. Uh, we're going to continue all the discussion on the after party. And if you're here with us on Twitch, stay tuned. The show is not over. We're just going to move to the after party, continue discussing on all the bits and knobs. We have a few questions from you guys that we have in the... In, a, in the back end uh, to discuss that. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube in the replay, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, uh, let's, l give us a comment if you want to have something discussed in next week OC show. And of course, if you're watching that just on YouTube, just go on Twitch, follow us. So next time we are live, you can actually uh, see that as well. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Thank you Tullius and Bilzevit for your, for your time. I find you back in the next 30 seconds right after the break. Keep pushing it. <laughs>